So here's a useful table for helping us to diagnose type 1 and type 2 diabetes. So we're looking at clinical features in type 1 and type 2. This column is type 1 and this column is type 2. So the first thing we look at is typical age at onset. Now most cases of type 1 present below the age of 40. It's very often a juvenile onset. It's not an invariable rule, but this is the most common picture, that this is a disease that triggers or comes on typically in relatively young people. Typically juveniles, teenagers, that kind of age. Type 2 diabetes, on the other hand, typically the people are older, in their 50s and 60s. Now it can come on at a younger age, but it's less common. Most cases are going to be 50 or over, typically in their 50s, 60s or even 70s at the time of diagnosis. Now what about duration of symptoms? How long will these patients have been suffering for? Well, we mentioned that in type 1 diabetes, the autoimmune destruction of the beta cells in the pancreas can take years to develop. But the clinical features only present when 80 or 90% of the beta cells have been destroyed. Therefore, a patient complaining of type 1 diabetes typically only complains of being unwell for a few weeks. So it's a relatively acute diagnosis, even although we know the pathological processes behind that have been going on for some time, but it still presents fairly acutely. Whereas in type 2, the symptoms can go on for months to years, and very often the symptoms are very mild. Indeed, the patient might not even realise they've got any symptoms at all. This can be a silent condition. But when you say to them, well, have you been a bit thirsty or passing more urine for some time, when, or feeling tired or having blurred vision, when they look back, sometimes they realise that they actually haven't been right for uh, a period of some time. But do remember, type 2 can be relatively silent. There may be no clinical features that the patient actually complains of. That's why it's important for us to test for glucose in the urine and the blood whenever we do a routine medical screening. Now, body weight in type 1 diabetes. Typically, it will be normal or the patient will have lost weight. In fact, in my experience, usually the patients lost some weight by the time they complain and uh, get diagnosed. But in type 2 diabetes, very often the patients are overweight. Again, it's not an invariable rule. You do get people of relatively normal weight getting type 2 diabetes. But most patients with type 2 diabetes are overweight. Having said that, I've talked to quite a few patients who've presented with type 2 diabetes who say they have lost weight prior to diagnosis. But very often these patients will be overweight at presentation. Now, ketonuria, the presence of ketones in the urine. As we've said, this is symptomatic of the presence of ketones in the blood. And in type 1 diabetes, you will get ketones, there will be a ketosis. In type 2, there will not be a ketosis. So this is very useful for differentiating between our type 1 and our type 2 diabetes. Whenever a patient pre presents, we need to test the urine for ketones. Yes means it's probably type 1. No ketones in the urine means we're probably looking at type 2 diabetes. Now, rapid death. Well, without treatment, actually, in type 1, these patients will probably die within a few months because they'll become ketoacidotic and will actually die. And before insulin was available, type 1 diabetes was an automatic death sentence. The young person, and typically it was a young person, very often an adolescent or teenager, would present and they would go on and die within a few months of diagnosis. But with type 2, these patients can go on for quite some time and the cause of death in type 2 is more likely to be complications of the diabetes rather than the diabetes itself. So without treatment, type 1 patients will die fairly rapidly, type 2 patients will not die rapidly. 
Now, auto means self. Antibodies, remember, are the immune proteins. And in type 1 diabetes, because it's an autoimmune disease, it's quite possible to get immune proteins, autoantibodies, that are actually destroying the beta cells. So autoantibodies in type 1, yes, these will usually be present if we test the blood. And as well as that, because the beta cells are broken up, then intracellular components of the beta cells, that is components of the beta cells, can get out into the blood, act as antigens, and actually stimulate the development of more antibodies. These antibodies aren't actually taking part in the destruction of the beta cells, but they're being produced as a consequence of the destruction of the beta cells. So autoantibodies in type 1, yes. In type 2, no, we don't really get the autoantibodies. In fact, we don't get the autoantibodies because it's not an autoimmune disease as the type 1 is. Complications of diabetes at diagnosis. Well, type 1, the patient's actually only been in the diabetic range of blood sugars probably for the past few weeks because up until then they've been producing enough insulin and that's not long enough to develop long-term complications. So long-term complications at diagnosis in type 1, no, the patients won't have it. But because in type 2, the patients have probably been diabetic for some months or years without realising it, then up to 25% of patients who present with type 2 diabetes can have some of the long-term complications, unfortunately. And of course, the earlier we can diagnose the type 2 and start treating it, the less of these complications we're going to see at diagnosis, which of course is always desirable. Now, family history. Well, as we've noted, there is some genetic tendency in type 1, but it's less than it is in type 2. So some genetic family history in type 1, but more in type 2. Type 2 is the more familiar of the two types of diabetes. Now we've mentioned that type 1 diabetes is autoimmune and if a patient's got one autoimmune disease they're more likely to have another autoimmune disease. So other autoimmune diseases present in type 1 it's quite common, well, I don't know common, you certainly see it that the patients can get other autoimmune diseases. So other autoimmune diseases can accompany type 1 diabetes, whereas in type 2 diabetes it's uncommon because type 2 is not an autoimmune disease as type 1 diabetes is.